Hey guys, it's Catherine and you're watching See K-Pop Today. And today I'm going to be going through my favorite K-Pop albums of 2017. Originally, I was just going to go through and do my favorite full studio albums in K-Pop of 2017. But the more I looked through the list, the more I realized like most of my favorite albums this year were actually like EPs or mini albums. So the list changed and it's just anyone and everyone again. Um, so it could be a solo artist, it can be a group, it can be um, rap, uh, even though that's not technically K-pop, but it can be rap. So I just want to lay what's going to be in this video. I chose 10 albums for this year. It was a lot and it took so much work to get through my huge list. So number 10 is Astro's Dream Part 1. It's 2017, almost 2018. If you haven't listened to Astro or gotten into Astro, what you doing? Because Astro is such a joy. And this album, like, whenever you need a pick-me-up, just put this album on and honestly, your day will be made. Like, it doesn't matter if you're having the crappiest day, you spill coffee in your shirt, you get gum on your shoe, someone flips you off, you get into a little fender bender, maybe someone at work is talking about you behind your back, it doesn't matter. Put this on and you will just be the happiest person on earth. Like, Astro really lifts my spirits with this album, as well as showcasing all of their vocal ranges and just their harmonies and how well they work with each other. Um, the raps go so hard. I mean, Astro is kind of seen as one of those kind of fluffier, more cutesy boy bands, but the rappers in Astro don't play, and they do so well in this album, and they're such a joy. So please, please, please go listen to the album. But it is my number 10 um, because, I mean, it just, it rocks. Number 9 is JJ Projects, verse number 2. Don't, don't know. Oh my gosh, when I went to Korea, I was like, I don't care if I lose an arm. I don't care if I don't buy anything else. I just need to get verse number two. Like, I was so set on getting that album from a store, from anywhere. Like, I really wanted it because when this album came out, I couldn't stop listening to it over and over and over again. And the title song is beautiful if you listen to that, but please go take the time to listen to the rest of the album because it's so mature and so grown and while there are some songs that are a little, they have like uh, an up tempo, a faster beat to the song than like the title song, it's still almost like purely a ballad album. There's not a whole lot going on that's like, hey, this could be a club song or a banger or anything. Like, it's purely vocals and just good instrumentals, and it really puts me at ease and kind of soothes me. And listening to Jin Young and JB, like, JB is my man, so, mm, like, oh my gosh, I love this album so much, and every song is so good, and it's a really cohesive album. It's not one of those albums that's like, what is this song doing in here? This doesn't fit at all. Like, this album, every song belongs together and really flows really nicely together. So, whew, thank you, JJ Project. Number eight is Taman's Move. I mean, I think I've said everything that I can say about Taman. Um, there's not a whole lot more that I can, you know, just whew, touch on. Move really showed us how, like, far off Taman can go from his original sound. So, I mean, each album that he's come out with, Ace, Press It, Now Move, like, are completely different from one another. And I think that's why I liked it so much, um, because I loved Press It to death. 
but um, I really wasn't expecting or didn't have a clue of what move was gonna sound like and it just kind of blew me away it's almost as if he's sort of whispering in your ear the whole album there are a couple of exceptions um, such as like rise or flame of your love or flame of love but it's really sexy and sensual and just like I think we've gotten that from Taman before but this time he really delved into that side of himself and just went for it and move is so addicting like I can't stop listening to it number seven is size four times two equals eight <laughs> This album has everything that you could ever want. It has club songs, it's got country, it has rap songs, it has pop, it has his fun jazzy songs. Like, it has everything. And Psy does it all, and he does it all extremely well. Um, and I like the fact that he boosts YG artists and he has YG features. I think it just makes it really feel like, hey, this is a YG family. Um, and so I've always appreciated that about him. And the song is just... I mean, please go listen to it if you haven't already. Like, I feel like a lot of people think of Psy especially Americans, um, even Americans that got into K-pop after the whole Gangnam Style craze and everything, um, I feel like a lot of people see him as a joke. And I just want to say to you, like, Psy is no joke. Like, there's a reason he's so big in Korea. There's a reason he signed to one of the big three. Um, there's a reason he's lasted so long. Like, he can bring it and he brings the box and the tunes and his lyrics are amazing so just go listen to this album please because it's mind-blowing and just like every other artist really needs to step up their game especially when Psy comes out with an album like this number six is another yg artist and it's g dragon's kwon ji young <laughs> So this album, aside from the fact that everyone hated the actual packaging of the album, um, this album was incredible. Like, every song feels like it really came from G-Dragon. And while he does recycle some of his raps, this is something that I don't know if people notice about G-Dragon, but he does recycle his raps. So you'll hear stuff from, and I'm not talking about like a little shout out, like saying, you know, crayon or something like that, but like he will recycle whole lines from his other songs or his other albums or features that he's done for other people. Um, and I think the greatness about G-Dragon is that you almost don't even care like you you hear the line you hear the same sentence and you're like you know what fuck it like it still works and it still sounds great and it still fits with the flow of the lyrics and what he's trying to get across the point he's trying to get across so this album was just like really really good and i feel like not enough people listen to it mostly because the title track was not what the rest of the album sounded like i think people were expecting another crayon or another coup d'etat and when the song came out untitled it was like everyone was like what like it's a ballad and so i feel like that turned a lot of people away even people that i know that listen to k-pop were like no, I haven't listened to his album yet, and I was just, I was floored. I was like, why? It's G-Dragon. And they were like, well, isn't it like a soft album? Like, it's just a ballad album? It's like, no. The rest of this album sounds nothing like that title song. And I'm glad that it doesn't, because I think it makes Untitled so unique. Um, he has done softer, ballady type songs before, but if this whole album was like the title track, I think we'd all be kind of like, eh, eh, okay. Um, but since it's the only song of its kind on this album, it really stands out and kind of pops. And then the other songs just go so hard and are so catchy and so fun or really like heartfelt. The very last song, I can't exactly, I can't remember what it's called, um, but the very last song in the album is like 
really deep um, and it, you can tell it definitely comes from him and his head his thoughts so if you haven't listened to this album you're a fool go listen to g-dragon's mini album because it was great i mean it was just pure g-dragon number five is nct 127's cherry bomb <laughs> I really didn't think that NCT could outdo themselves after Limitless and then they come and prove me wrong and Cherry Bomb it's just a solid album like I really don't know what else to say about them that I haven't said already um, you've got ballads you've got trap you've got like summer bops you have the title track cherry bomb i mean we've all heard that but it's just an incredible album and just the level that they're on really surprises me how hard they've been going really surprises me um and cherry bomb i think is my favorite it limitless was my favorite and then when cherry bomb came out i was like there's no way that this can be limitless and then boom they just they put it on me so please like that's that's an incredible album and i can't even wait to see what they do next Number four is Red Velvet's Rookie. This is another album where the title track could have definitely deterred some people from listening to the album. Um, for a split second, it almost deterred me. I was like, I was really not feeling Rookie at first, and I was kind of like, what's the rest of this album gonna sound like? But I'm glad I took a chance and I listened to it because, well one, I love Rookie now. Like, it's just a part of my everyday life, and it's so fun and catchy and just, I don't know, like you just kind of let go when you listen to it. Um, but two, the rest of the album, sounds nothing like Rookie. Like, it's incredible. I think sometimes companies make mistakes choosing title tracks because the rest of this album is not even, like, Rookie is definitely the red side of Red Velvet, but the rest of the album is the velvet side of Red Velvet. And it's like smooth R&B, you almost have like some soul songs in there, um, you have a gorgeous ballad at the end of the album. Um, and so you're just kind of like, what were they thinking putting Rookie as the title track? Because I know a lot of people hated that, but please go listen to the rest of this album because it is incredible. And the harmonies, the vocals, the raps, they really give it to you with the raps, like awesome. And you can jam out to this album, but you can also like kind of get in your feelings with this album too. And Red Velvet just, they did it again. Number three is EXO's The War, The Power of Music. So the reason I'm not doing just The War is because I really feel like the repackaged album is like the complete version of this. Sometimes you can have albums where you have the original album and then you have the repackage and you're totally fine with the original you know you don't necessarily need the repackage but i feel like you really need the repackaged version of this album to sort of get the whole scope of things um if you know me and you watched this channel when coco bop came out you'll know i was not a fan of this album i was not a fan of the war when it first dropped and but I'm just, that's kind of how dumb I am because, whew, honesty hour, I was not a fan of Exact when it first came out either. Um, I, I know it's crazy, Exact is a beautiful album, and I'll admit my mistake there, but this one really took me a long time and it took me many listens to really like get into the songs. And I think the problem wasn't the fact that um, the songs were bad. Like, if you listen to each individual song, 
they're incredible. I think the problem was the cohesiveness of the album. None of the songs really go together. Like if they had released these songs as singles, you would have, I would have been through the roof. I would have been like, this is amazing, this is amazing. Um, what you do is incredible. Diamond is amazing. Um, touch it. Oh my gosh, yes. Walk on memories, gorgeous. Like I love each song. Sweet Lies, ooh, that's on Bryson Tiller ish right there. That is gorgeous. But I love each of the songs, but as an album, it just really threw me off. I was like, how do these work together? I can't, like, you're jumping from one to another to another. They're completely different, like, worlds. And so that's what threw me off. But when you go back and you listen to the album, and then you realize it's a full album with nothing but hits and bops and masterpieces, and the album is so diverse, um, I think then you really start to appreciate the fact that, like, EXO are growing and they're maturing and whether we're ready for it or not they don't give a shit because they're like hey we doing this anyway so here you go um so I finally saw the lights I know I know and EXO's the war repackaged version is just one of the best albums of the year when they won album of the year the mom was like I was so happy I didn't think anyone else deserved that but them like this album was truly one of the best of the year. Number two is Epic High's We've Done Something Wonderful. So this is actually my only hip-hop album, if you're not counting like G-Dragon. Um, this is my only hip-hop album on this list. And I know it's weird because many people came out with great albums, G2, Dope 2, um, Owen Overdose came out with something, um, Coming To You Live, oh my gosh, incredible album. There's so many I could have put on here, but I stuck with Epic High because you just can't beat seasoned veterans. Like, this album perfectly matches and is like just as good, if not maybe a little better, than the album they came out um, with a couple years ago which was like it came out a little after i got into k-pop and it was called shoebox shoebox nine or something and this album is just so full and rich and and like it's not an album that you just can listen to oh i'm just gonna listen to this i'm not gonna look up the lyrics like you have to look up the lyrics and the lyrics they, I mean, there's some truth in those lyrics, as we all know. Mithra and Tablo are such good lyric, like, lyricists. Um, and then the flows are great, the features are amazing. Like, Epic High, there's a reason they're kind of the kings, the, the, the fathers of hip-hop. It's just because they know how to make not just a, like, a good beat or a good... Mm, I don't know, just a good a good feel, but they know how to talk about things that are bigger than themselves. They know how to talk about things that are going on in their own lives, but also make you feel like that's going on in your life as well. And I feel like there's such an art that a lot of hip hop artists have lost, um, whether because of political reasons, because of personal reasons. Um, they just feel like, hey, we're better off making kind of club songs that'll get us out there more, get our name out there more. And I think Epic High has the advantage of not having to rely on getting their name out there. People know who Epic High is, so now they can just focus on making good music and making good stories. Um, a lot of young rappers have to get that first song, you know, that big break. And so they gotta make it fun. They have to make it pleasing to the general public. And it's usually not like the really deep stories or political raps that kind of get you noticed. It's the club songs or, you know, the summer bops or whatever. So I think it's just an advantage Epic High has, but man, they take that and they run with it. Like they're not, failing that they, they haven't like slowed down this album is so incredibly just I don't know like it's so fulfilling to listen to it and you're just oh, you feel you feel like you've lived a whole life after listening to it it's very intense it's very raw um 
and it's it's a joy it's pure joy my number one album this was a shock to me and it didn't hit me until they came out with it later in the year i had um another one of their albums on my list for consideration um but this one just i oh my gosh i just oh my gosh okay so i'm just gonna say it it really shocked me that this is my number one album of 2017 but b2b's brother act <laughs> at a new b2b stand i have not even liked them for more than a year like i have been pretty new with them um i think new men or new man i think that album came out last year that was the first album that i kind of noticed them and i was like oh, oh wow they're they're getting there like they're doing some stuff they're gaining traction they're really kind of showing off their true talents and then Feel em came out and that was completely different from last year's album because it was more like a party album. It had a few slow songs on there, um, but Brother Act is just one of the most gorgeous and beautiful albums that I've heard this year. And each song, there are some songs or some albums I should say where um, the songs are so similar to each other they almost just run together and you don't really differentiate them and you're just kind of like you, you get through the album and you're like oh is it over you know you don't even realize that like the songs were playing one right after the other but this album oh my gosh i'm getting so excited this album was so good and just each song has its own color its own flavor like even though most of the album is actually a ballad album it's, i mean it's a true fall album um there's not a huge amount of like party songs or club songs or they were trying to throw in a summer song in there there is um maybe like one in there but that's it and it's a full album there's like i think 10 11 tracks on there not including the skits but um this album really kind of blew my mind and the vocals is what got me as well as Pinio's rapping has gotten so good and i think it's amazing that he still raps in english like i don't know why he does that exactly because he knows korean but he still raps almost fluently in english um which i, I mean i know he knows english but like it just kind of took me by surprise and i think it really adds another layer to each of the songs when Pino comes in and he starts rapping you're like mm, I know this part and you go and the vocals the harmonies are incredible each song has like one or two parts or verses where it's just like it makes the whole song and it makes you really get into the song and memorize the song and remember it because you're just like oh yeah this is that song with that great you know like that great high note or this is that song with those great harmonies here at you know 238 or whatever like i think i could talk about this album forever and it's a shame because i should have done an album review for it because each song is like so close to my heart and so near and dear to me um but yeah, this this album, please go listen to it. I know it it was popular, but it didn't get enough attention that it deserved. Um, but this is definitely the best album, hands down, of the fall of this year, but also of the year in my opinion. Also, one more thing. So B2B are from Cube Entertainment and um, there was another group that used to be under Cube Entertainment, Beast, now known as Highlight. And what I will say is Beast 
was used to be that group that just solidly and consistently came out with the most gorgeous ballads the most gorgeous kind of they were weird they were slowed songs but they still had a really hard beat behind them um and so Beast was kind of that designated group and they were older they had more experience so you kind of you knew they were gonna give you the good stuff but I think Highlight is going in a different direction they're kind of more fun more poppy now and to take their place I think B2B has really come into their own and they've really matured and they've really kind of at least grabbed my attention I don't know about Korea um, the general public in Korea, but my attention, oh my gosh, I'm here. I'm here for those sounds. I'm here for their new kind of adult look. Like they just look amazing. And when I was in Korea, um, a lot of shops and stores and restaurants that we went into, they would just play kind of whatever was new, whatever was popping, you know, at the time. But I did notice that a lot of B2B from this album, from Brother Act was played. I don't know if that's, a testament to whether they're doing well as a group in Korea or if that was just hey the store's playing you know just a rotation of top 40 hits so it was on all the time but I really hope that they're doing well because I would hate to see B2B like struggling right now when they've really I think found their place in K-pop and they've really grown into their sound Thank you so much for watching you guys. In the comments down below, um, post your list, your opinions and thoughts on my list, and if you agreed or disagreed with my number one choice. Like this video, subscribe, follow me on Tumblr and Twitter, those are down below. And thanks for watching CUK Pop today, and have a good day.